Are you folding the trail arm in your golf swing correctly? Today's video is gonna be really simple, but I'm gonna hopefully answer that question and get you into the correct movement with your trail arm in the backswing and the downswing movement. Make sure you check out this video. So there is a reason why I'm wearing my son's baby shark armband. You didn't see it wrong, it is a baby shark on here. This exercise is gonna work really well to give you the correct feels in your backswing and the downswing of what this trail arm should be doing. So what I'm looking for, if we jump straight into it, is I would like the elbow to start to fold downwards in the backswing. I like it to happen by the time we get to lead arm parallel. I'd like to see that we are creating some fold of this arm. Now there are some good golfers who go wider and fold late, but the later it happens, remember that transition, the start of the downswing, it's over so quickly. So if you're trying, trying to actually focus on doing it there, or, or there's a lot of things happening and it's happening so quickly, I find it easier to ask players to feel like they would fold that elbow. That's not losing width, okay? That's still keeping the club away from me, but allowing that fold to fold and, and make this angle, almost this 90 degree angle between my club shaft and my trail arm by the time my lead arm gets to parallel to the ground. Now, if I do that, I've got this band, I've got this rubber ring here, way down so it's almost touching uh, my elbow. and. I'm actually feeling like there's now a squeeze between my bicep and my forearm in that position to allow that arm to fold. If I keep that arm dead straight, I can't feel it at all. So I'm trying to almost squeeze this, um, this inflatable between my bicep and my forearm by the time I get to around left arm parallel, three quarters of the way back in my backswing. So I've got that angle and I keep that angle but I want the band to be away from my chest. So I don't want to bring my arm into my body. A lot of people are too narrow in the backswing. We see the arms folding inward. So we want to feel like, yes, we allow it to fold down and it's touching my side here. But by the time I get to the top of the backswing, there is a little bit of separation from my trail arm to my trail side. I don't want to jam that rubber ring into me. I want to keep it that inflatable just a little bit away from my side here. That armband, I keep calling it a rubber ring, don't I? Armband, just a little bit away from my rib cage, away from my side. So I've got some width at the top of the backswing. If we get very narrow going back, what happens? That equal opposite reaction, we tend to get very wide on the downswing. We don't want narrow wide because we're throwing all the energy out early in the start of the downswing. So we're allowing it to fold. I feel that little pinch between my bicep and my forearm, because remember this is down pretty close to my elbow. But then when I get to the top, I'm keeping that same angle, but I've got some separation of the band away from my side here. That's what I want to feel. Now in the downswing, I almost want to get back to where I was in the backswing. So I want to still feel at halfway down that there is a pinch again between my bicep and my forearm with the band in contact that I'm again not going wide and losing that angle. I've got some lag here created. The arm should be straightening more into impact. We don't want the arm to be straightening here. So this works for a lot, lot of things. If you're someone who is a chronic overswinger of the golf club, getting too narrow, getting the hands too close to the shoulder, the band is gonna work really well. If you're just questioning the movement of that trail arm, not getting it to fold correctly, this is gonna help. You know, we don't want this kind of movement. Again, I've got no contact here. Whereas that movement, I've allowed the elbow to fold down and I can feel it, the connection between my forearm and my bicep here in the backswing. So that's the correct fold. I'm not getting the trail arm too high. I'm not getting too wide. It works really, really well for anyone questioning this trail arm movement in the backswing and the start of the downswing. So it's folding, touching there. Staying at that same angle, but I've got some width. I can still feel that pinch again between my bicep and my tricep before the arm starts to extend. So I could just do, you know, a little practice swing here. Get that feel almost then.
the arm extending correctly into impact. So works so well for a number of points. We want that width, but we want that trail elbow to fold downwards. How, what, the angle we get that trail arm does depend on flexibility. If we could get that trail arm at a similar angle to our spine, we're doing pretty well. What we don't want to see is the trail arm too high, excessively high this way. And we're not trying to get it straight down here if we can't do it, because actually if I was trying to sacrifice this position, get my arm dead straight, but I'm coming up and out of posture, that's not going to help me achieve anything. So allow it to fold down, feel that pinch between the forearm and the bicep to halfway back. Little bit of separation to the top. That's that great trail arm position, almost that weighter hand that I want to feel. That connection of the band again on the downswing to make sure I'm maintaining lag and I'm letting it extend into impact. Let's just hit a couple. I'll slow it down for you so you can see. So it really feels to me the energy is more here at the golf ball, not wasting it. In the backswing, hopefully what you'll also see, especially from this face on camera, is that I'm not overswinging. I'm making a full 90 degree shoulder turn, but I'm still keeping my arms stretched and I'm not getting narrow, I'm not getting long. That's what a lot of golfers struggle with. If they get very long, they generally struggle with the sequence of the downswing because we know that we should start with the ground up, right? We should start with the legs first at the start of the downswing. But if you go so long, get your arms very narrow here, guess what? You can't because you'd leave your arms miles lagging behind. So what happens is that player works their hands and arms very, very quickly in that transition. And they generally say to me, oh, my swing feels too quick. Well, actually we want more speed, don't we, at impact. We just don't want the speed here at the start of the downswing transition movement. So really allowing that correct fold in the backswing and that great extension on, this, on the way down, extending at the right point. Well, they all felt, that's going a little left, but they all felt very, very solid to me. Now, this can work with any golf club. I don't care whether it's an iron, a wedge, a driver here. The same thing's going to be true. Um, blow it up to different amounts, obviously, is the benefit of these, depending on how much you want to feel that. I've put some air in both sides. I've got it down, so it's almost covering my elbow because I want to try and feel like I'm creating that connection between my forearm and my arm that I'm not creating tons and tons of width and separation. Here, I'm allowing it to fold downwards, but now I'm creating a little bit of separation here with my trail arm away from my trail side, not bringing my arms in too narrow. And again, it stops my trail arm getting too long at the top because you can again see I'm putting some pressure on here that I can't get my arm too close to my body. So it's great for that backswing width. And it's great if you're trying to feel the correct movement with that trail arm in the downswing also. Unfortunately, you're not allowed to take it to the golf course unless you could hide it under your jumper, but give it a go on the driving range practice area, at home in the garden. If you struggle with any of those points I mentioned, and it's definitely gonna give you the right feels. If that video has helped, hit the thumbs up, share it with as many golfers as you can, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel at least two instructional videos a week. And right now, YouTube is suggesting the next video of mine that's relevant for you and it is just here. Click on it and check it out.